cycling shoes and cleats. The chances are, if you ride a bike, at some point you're going to need to replace one or the other. If it's your cleats you're replacing on a current pair of shoes, that's really easy. You simply draw around the cleat on the shoe and attach the new cleat in exactly the same position. But if, like me, you're fortunate enough to be upgrading to a new pair of shoes, either the same model or a similar model but in a different colour or whatever, then you're going to need to apply a little more thought to ensure the new cleats go onto the new shoes in exactly the same position to prevent any niggles or injuries that could occur. To make the job easier, there are a few things you should prepare beforehand. A tape measure for measuring your cleat position on your shoe, an Allen key or screwdriver, depending on the cleats that you have for removing the cleats and putting the new ones on, some anti-seize or some grease from the threads of the new cleats, a pencil, if I can pick it up, a pencil, uh, some paper, and some masking tape, because we don't want to draw on our new shoes. To start with, we're gonna begin by slipping on our old shoes, and then we're gonna locate at the ball of our foot, and this is just at the head of our metatarsal bones, or as I like to call them, the sticky out bits. Once you have located this area, place a strip of masking tape over the four outer parts of these bones, interior, exterior of both feet. Now, pay careful attention to where the center point of the bone is. This is where the pencil comes in. Draw a nice clear line down through this bone. You should now have four lines at 90 degrees to the worktop or to the ground. Now that you've got your markers in place, it's time to measure the difference from them to the center point of the pedal axle and the cleat. To do this, you'll need the paper, the pen and the tape measure. What you want to do is start by placing each shoe on the piece of paper and pushing hard into the paper until you start to create an indentation. You may find that it's actually really difficult to do this and standing on a softer floor in your shoes is actually the easiest way to do this. At the same time as doing this and without moving the shoe, you want to start to mark on the shoe where the metatarsal bones would lie if you went straight down onto the piece of paper. So make sure you're really careful to line these up as this is one of the most crucial measurements that you're going to make. If you want to be extra cautious to make sure that everything lines up accurately, you could also draw around the two rear corners of your cleat whilst your shoe is in this position. Whilst doing that, you also want to make sure you mark the foremost tip of the shoe accurately on the paper and the same for the rearmost point as well. This should give you now four good corners to line everything up when it comes to the new shoes. Yep, you've guessed it. Once you've done one shoe, it's time to do the other. If you're using the majority of cleat types out there, you will now have your shoe outlined around the cleat along with the most prominent markers from each foot. If you're using speed play cleats, however, this is actually much easier as all you need to do is dial in the adjustment screws on either side of the cleat to exactly the same position as the old ones. Really simple. It's now time for your new shoes. The first thing you need to do is slip them onto your feet, pick up your tape and your pencil and mark your metatarsal bones as we did before. After that, you can start greasing your cleat bolts and then looking at loosely tightening the cleats onto the bottom of your new shoes. I have to remove a sticker first. One thing not to forget though is if, like myself, you use a custom orthotic insole, now is the time to remove them from your old shoe and slip them into the new ones. Snug. One of my favorite steps to forget when it comes to attaching new cleats is actually forgetting the grease or the anti-seize, much to my dismay when it comes to trying to remove them when I find that they're seized onto the bottom of the shoe. Anyway, you can now go about attaching your cleats to your shoes. If you do want to be really precise with your measurements, now is the time to get out your tape measure and measure where the cleat comes within reference to the front and the back of the shoe. This way you can guarantee that when the cleat goes on the new shoe, it's in exactly the same fore and aft position. Now that you have loosely tightened the cleat to the bottom of the shoe, enough that you can still adjust it a little if you need to, it's the time to bring back in those bits of paper and start to line everything up. If you are using a different brand of shoe or even a different size of shoe for whatever reason, this is an area where you may find a little discrepancy, but bear with it, line up all the markers that you've made and you will get there eventually. If you are struggling to get your markers to line up, start by putting the cleat into its indentation that you made on the paper and then adjust the shoe around the cleat. It may take a little bit of time to make sure that you do this step 100% correctly, but it's worth spending that extra bit of time to make sure that you get it right. Once you are happy, you can now tighten your new cleats onto the bottom of your shoes. If for whatever reason you aren't quite happy with the way things are lining up, it could be that you've drawn the line in a very slightly different position on your new shoes to on your old shoes. Tighten your cleats to around 90% of full tension. If you've got a torque wrench, this is a great time to use it. Tighten them enough that allows you to clip into the bike without them moving, and then you can test them accurately on a turbo trainer or just lent up against the wall. 
If you are changing brand of shoe, then you need to be aware of your stack height. Stack height is essentially the distance from the bottom of your foot to the top of the pedal. Most of this information is available online, but if you are changing brand of shoe, you may need to consider changing your saddle height if the stack height has changed. No matter what your setup is, you should now be ready to test it out. This is always best done on a short, easy recovery ride or on an indoor turbo trainer. This will ensure that you can make any final minor adjustments to your cleat positioning. And if like myself, you change the type of cleats you're using, I've gone from the fixed ones here to the free float version here, you need to make sure that the cleat, the neutral position of the cleat falls within that free float movement. Free float is the travel that your foot can make before you start to disengage from the pedal. If you aren't 100% confident in your bike setup, then I would always recommend going for a float cleat. You should now be completely satisfied with the positioning of your cleats underneath your shoes, in which case it's time to finally tighten them up to the manufacturer recommended values. Be careful not to exceed these though, because you could damage the bottom of your shoe or your cleat. And when you've done that, you'll be the proud wearer of a brand new pair of shoes. But which color do you prefer, red or white? Let me know in the poll up on the top of your screen right now. I'm thinking the red ones. If you found this video useful, do give us a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And for more maintenance videos, click down there.